Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it. 70% or more of veterans are missing out on this benefit that could potentially pay out or save you combination, in fact, would be multi-millions of dollars. By the monetary payments themselves could pay out multi-millions of dollars. This is a really important, I believe, subject because so many of us self-segregate out of this benefit. Let's jump into it. Please hit the thumbs up, subscribe, share with a friend, all that good stuff. I truly appreciate it. If you want to support the channel in other ways, please consider being a member. You can do that by going to the homepage. You'll see the highlighted members there and you can hit the join button. Thank you so much to all you members, uh, everybody who subscribed, everybody who hits the thumbs up and watches the video helps to push this information out to those that need it. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about millions of dollars, especially the sooner you do it, the more it's going to pay out over time. I'm talking about disability compensation. This is an earned benefit to all veterans, regardless of where you served, when you served, how you served, combat uh, experience or not, doesn't matter. What we're talking about here is disability compensation from the VA. Now, look, I already hate that they call it disability compensation because there's many things within it that you probably don't consider disabling, right? Most of us think disability, disabling would have to do with, you know, loss of limb or loss of use, uh, those types of things, physical ailments. Now, there has been a light that has been, you know, shined all over PTSD, which is good. So that's not a physical impairment and it's good that there's been that um, exposure for uh, PTSD and that it is a, a, a disability. So we do have that going for us as far as awareness is concerned. But there's all this other stuff out there and I hear all the time folks who say, you know, save it for somebody else who needs it. I'm fine. I'm okay. Uh, you know, I still have my fingers and toes. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I didn't uh, serve in combat or whatever. There's a thousand different reasons out there. And here's the bottom line. If you worked for any other organization in the world and they told you, hey, look, after you, after you uh, uh, complete your whatever, four-year term uh, with us, you're going to be fully vested in this, uh, you know, company stock. And uh, it's 100% yours at that point, and you can sell it uh, or whatever. And uh, you don't need to stay here working. You're 100% vested. After you're done with your four years that you worked there or whatever, you decide to leave. And you're not, what you're not going to do is say, you know what? That stock that's now worth $2 million, I don't need it. Don't want it. I'm fine. You know, I can still go work. I got a good job that I'm going to. I don't need that. Nobody would ever, ever do that. But for some reason, 70% of veterans are missing out. Now, I get it. Not everybody's going to qualify for VA compensation, but I will tell you this. A hell of a lot more than 30% will qualify for something in the disability compensation world. Now, I want to talk you through it a little bit here. The, the, the couple quick examples that I always like to give because people would never assume that these are conditions that can be service connected. So migraines, heartburn, bad heartburn, GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, which by the way, the rating schedule is changing on that and in my opinion is really tightening up the threshold and making it a little more we'll call it difficult uh, to get rated highly in that specific uh, rating schedule. But in today's world, right now, here we are at the beginning of May, and this, this uh, change is gonna take effect, I believe it was on the 19th of this month. So, if you're watching this prior to that, probably put in an intent to file if you have uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease because I believe it's a little more I guess the, the, the left and right limits are a little wider uh, in today's rating schedule. Now, the reason why I like to give those two today is because migraines can be rated as high as 50% by themselves. 
GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, that bad heartburn can be rated as high as 60% today. The new rating schedule is going to bounce it up to 80, but again, it's really tightening up on uh, the criteria uh, and in my opinion is going to make it a little less advantageous for folks. But again, in today's world, 60% GERD and 50% migraines. Those are two fantastic ratings. These ratings are just a couple of them, but I like to use those because it kind of shines the light on you don't have to miss a leg, you don't have to have loss of use or a range of motion issue. You can have other things going on with you. Uh, degenerative disc disease, arthritis, or other common uh, conditions that you can get rated for. A lot of back problems, lumbar strains, that type of stuff, uh, joints, those types of things, your plantar fasciitis, feet problems, uh, your um, gastrointestinal, uh, and, and your, I guess I've already said GERD. Besides GERD, other digestive issues uh, that you may have, such as, let's say, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, you could probably. Uh, also look at things like uh, celiac disease, which is coming up here uh, in the rating change to bounce it up, I believe, up to 80%. The bottom line is, is that anything that you can get diagnosed can pretty much be service-connected. I'm going to run you through the three major components of having a successful VA claim. You have to have your time in service, right? You have to be a veteran. You have to have a good discharge, that type of stuff. So your time in service gives you that window of opportunity. Now there's something that's called presumptives, which uh, is a whole other ball of wax. So besides presumptive conditions, just your standard, regular, I'm gonna file a claim for these conditions, this is what it looks like. You have to uh, provide your time in service, that gives you that window of opportunity. Two, you have to have a diagnosed condition. That diagnosed condition must be chronic in nature or have some sort of residual effects. It can't can't be healed from it completely. You, you have to have some sort of an ongoing problem or an ongoing condition. The third thing is a nexus. A nexus means a link, a connection. A connection between your diagnosed condition and your time in service. What the VA is saying here is, veteran, show me, prove to me that your condition manifested during your time in service or is a result of your time in service. Now it's up to you to provide this proof. So you're providing these things to the VA as evidence for your claim, to support your claim. You have a DD-214 or DD-214s with an S and put that in to give the window of opportunity, your time frames, right? You have your diagnosis from your doctor, great. Now you have the nexus. A lot of folks, this is the stumbling block is the nexus. You need to prove that your condition manifested during your time in service or as a result of your time in service. Now, let's lean on it manifested during your time in service. If you don't have anything in your medical records or you're not sure, the first thing I suggest is order your medical records, your service treatment records from your time in service. That's with your SF-180. That is your standard form 180. And that you can order your service treatment records, go through them, read them, see if you see anything that either mentions the condition or even if you're self-reporting it, that's fine. Mentioning the condition, uh, mentioning signs or symptoms of that condition. So an example of that would be uh, you checked a box that said that you've had heartburn. Okay, you've had heartburn. Well, heartburn currently is a uh, symptom of GERD based on the current rating schedule that again is going to expire here May 19th and they're changing the rating schedule to, to not include that in the specific criteria. However, we'll just use what we got today. Now you find that, now you have a leg to stand on in your medical records to go look, I complained to heartburn. Now if you have that in there, great. If you don't have that in there, that's fine. Now you want to work with your um, relatives, right? People that knew you before you joined and obviously still know you. They can write letters attesting to knowing that you did not have a condition when you joined. No knowledge of you ever having an issue with X. We'll just stay on, on GERD. No issues of you having GERD, uh, never had any issues until you were halfway through your time in service and then all of a sudden, everywhere you went, you had a bottle of Tums or Rolaids or whatever. 
Now you get a few of those letters from family members, get some letters from people you served with if you can, that can attest to knowing that you were eating Tums all the time uh, or, or whatever, drinking Melanta, eating Rolaids, whatever. Those are called buddy statements, getting those statements as well, important. You writing a letter yourself, a statement, uh, explaining that you know you never went to sick call, you didn't go to the battalion aid station, you didn't go get any of this stuff documented, you just self-treated with over-the-counter medications because you didn't want to cause any problems and uh, be looked at uh, in you know, sideways because you're going to medical. So you explain that uh, you just self-treated and uh, that's the way that you did it until finally in an example here, you saw a commercial about Prilosec and you thought, well, maybe I should go into the doctor. So you go to the doctor, you have the conversation with the doctor. When you talk with your doctor, you are going to explain to them that you've been having these symptoms since you were in the military somewhere, whatever, in the middle of your time of service, right? So now, during that conversation, the doctor's gonna say, and put in your notes, that you've been experiencing this, these issues since your time in service, right, by dates. Then you're gonna ask that doctor for a nexus letter. A letter from the doctor that's stating that your condition most likely, I, there's two versions here. Always ask for them to say more than likely or most likely to have occurred during your time in service in this example. If they are hesitant, you know, well, I can't really say that it is or isn't. If they give you that kind of pushback, rephrase it and say, well, look, I at least, I just need to have an at least as likely as not a 50-50 chance. That is the threshold for the VA. If your condition is 50-50, right, they're supposed to rule in your favor. Now that's all evidence collected on both sides, right? So if they get a little more evidence pointing against you, you're not gonna win. If you got a little more evidence pointing towards you, you win, and if it's equal, you win, is the way that it's supposed to be. So with that, I wanna go ahead and add one more thing here utilize the schedule of ratings the schedule of ratings is huge if you can't find your specific condition just type it all in va rating schedule whatever your condition is it'll probably show up on uh, lawyer websites as well you can read through it that's an important piece to understand the criteria that the va is looking for another thing i want to throw in as far as the dollars and cents is concerned your if you yourself are a veteran who has a spouse and a dependent so you have two dependents uh, you would be looking at about $4,100 per month tax-free. Multiply that over 12 months, over 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, however much longer you're going to live, and that is a big pile of money in your pocket, tax-free. In addition, depending on where you are, where you where you fall on a hundred percent rating if you fall to the hundred percent rating that's what you're looking at is the maximum amount for a hundred percent for a spouse and a dependent if you have more dependents it goes up higher if you slide over to the special monthly compensation side of the house it's even more money don't forget the price of medical care you also get free medical care from the VA which has a price tag that you would have to pay if you didn't have it from there. So don't shortchange that because that adds a lot of money to that pile as well. So this again can become a multi, multi-million dollar uh, benefit for you. It's very important. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Have a great one. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.